formerly from Yakima, formerly an evangelist, and now a missionary here with us tonight to deliver God's word, God's message. Let's open up our hearts and our minds as Pastor Bart comes, and let's give God praise. Praise the Lord. How many is ready for some church tonight? Praise God. What a privilege uh, it is to be here. Amen. Uh, and uh, uh, being able to spend some time with you. Uh, amen. This morning uh, we had a, a tearjerker. Amen. It was, it, was, uh, it was a difficult time. Uh, but uh, at the same time, thank God. Amen. Because you actually love people. People love you. And it's, it's hard sometimes. But how many know, uh, amen, that it's always easy when you know it's because you're doing the will of God. You're not just leaving because ah, I'm tired of this place. You're not just leaving because they want to give you the boot, right? Get out of here, you know. But uh, it is a bittersweet type of a thing, amen. John 15, verse 11. This sermon was actually birthed uh, uh, from the day that my wife and I were announced, amen. God began to put some things in my heart and in my mind, uh, amen, uh, and, uh, and then recently, amen, we weren't able to go to the whole uh, Pioneer Rally over in McMinnville, but my wife and I uh, needed to make sure that we got over there at least for one night uh, so that we can, uh, uh, you know, tell people thank you for, for all their helps and their, their, their relationship with people and to say goodbye, right? Uh, uh, and we thought that that was very important, uh, and so that's why we went, uh, amen, and it was tremendous, glory to God, Pastor, Pastor uh, Campbell, amen, uh, uh, oh my gosh, I mean, I, uh, you know, I'm always chewing carpet when he comes, amen, <laughs> and, uh, and then at the end, amen, that Pastor Foley would pray for my wife and I, and give me a word, amen, I've known Pastor Foley for many years years we we are basically he's he's like a grandpa to us not just because of his age because i'm a grandpa right and so but uh uh obviously the the whole concept of our fellowship amen pastor mitchell he pastor foley was saved under pastor mitchell pastor foley goes to alamogordo new mexico and pioneers that church uh, uh, uh my pastor got saved under pastor foley Pastor Mammon took over the church and sent my pastor to Ogden, Utah, where I got saved under Pastor Tom Quinlan. Amen. And so uh, Pastor Foley is like grandpa to us. Amen. And uh, very close over the years. Amen. And it was a tremendous privilege to be able to have him pray for us and give us that word. Uh, amen. And I remember uh, as we were there uh, on Friday... And they were praying for us. Pastor Richard Ruby was the one who laid hands on us. Amen. And he gave me a word. Amen. And uh, uh, listen, words are, are nice, but there's something you still need to do with the word. It ain't just automatic. Amen. So I just wanted to throw that out. But listen, he gave me a word and and uh, we went through some things, amen, and, and basically the one main thing he was saying is because of your faithfulness, not because I was great, not because I was talented, not because I'm smart, because none of those really exist, <laughs> but because we stayed. We stayed where God had put us, through the thick, through the thin, Amen. Through the battles, through the, the trials and the tribulations. And God did something in us over the years. My wife and I, she's been saved two years longer than me. I got saved December 8, 1985. Amen. A couple of years ago. Uh, amen. And, and uh, I've not always made the great decisions of life. Amen. Uh, uh, I, as you think back, you know, I could have done that better. I could have done that. I'm not talking about just nitpicking your life. You know what I'm saying? But we look in retrospect. But then the double barrel from the Ruby brothers came. <laughs> Pastor Ray Ruby, who I call Tio, <laughs> because he was the pastor in Salt Lake City, which is 30 minutes down the road. 
from where, and so we did everything together as churches. There were three churches at the time, Provo, Salt Lake City, and Ogden, and we were very close, uh, amen, and uh, he was in our church, we were at their church in different times, amen, uh, and we were very close. It was because of him that I rap, amen. I'm telling you, and so, amen, uh, uh, we've known him for many, many years, and uh, he said to me, he says, Bart, you were made for this. Now, I began to weep. Nobody can see that far up on the stage, so we're okay. But he said, you were made for this. And so the title of my sermon is, we were made for this. Out of John chapter 15, we're going to read in just a moment, but that's the trigger for this, amen, uh, and uh, because there's something to that when you think about the word made, amen, it's talking about to form it, to fashion it, amen, and uh, listen, we're not born uh, for this, we were made for this. Amen, uh, uh, this takes away all the ideas of the automatic uh, 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 things that, well, if God's going to do it, he's just going to do it. No, no, no. You have a part to play in it. I have a part to play in this, right? Amen. And so it's not an automatic thing, but we were made for this. We're formed. God is doing a, a, a work in us. Uh, amen. Uh, and it's not overnight either. Amen. It takes time. Time to forge things in us. Time to develop faith and time Amen. To be tested and found in line. Reminds me of an old book that I have. I don't know if you any of you ever uh, uh, read the book, but it's called Disciples Are Made, Not Born. Amen. And so we want to look at this tonight. Amen. Very briefly. John 15. We're going to start. To, uh, amen. In verse number 11. If you're there, shout amen. I can't see that. <laughs> Amen. So the Bible says in Jesus. No, wrong one. That's late. There we go. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment. That you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this. Then one lays down his life for his friends. You are my friends. If. I don't know if is the biggest letter in the English language. If. If. You do whatever I command. I had to find it. <laughs> No longer do I call you servants, for a servant doesn't know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to, and that you should uh, go and bear fruit, uh, and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask in the Father's uh, uh, ask the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you that you love one another. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. I'm asking God your anointing and blessing. Hide me behind the cross of Calvary. God, let your name be glorified. God, cause us to have revelation tonight that as we serve you, that you will honor that you would bless and that you would move upon your word and change our lives. We thank you tonight in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. So when we follow after Jesus, there has to be a surrendering of our will for his will. Not a forceful thing, amen. This must be of our own volition. Uh, this has got to be something that we give ourselves to, uh, amen, uh, 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 out, of, out of a heart that says, you know what, I want to obey God. You know, I, I lived my life for many years for myself, 
Amen. Uh, I was a selfish individual. I was always looking at self pity, selfishness, all of these things. Uh, Amen. Uh, and uh, I got to the point where God finally got a hold of my life and to begin to save me and change me. But that didn't me may, uh, mean that everything was done. Uh, uh, amen. God had to do a work in my life. And this is where it's talking about we were made for this. We were formed for this. We were forged. Amen. Uh, and fashioned and made for something uh, that means, uh, amen, there has to be a design that is involved for this or a pattern, uh, if you will. Uh, and if this is the case, uh, we will be successful in our endeavors for God. Because God never fails. And if we're doing the will of God, we will not either. This is not eternal security. I do actually believe in eternal security. That if you stay right with God, you'll let you into heaven. <laughs> Amen. That's pretty secure. Amen. The minute you start turning your back on God, <laughs> you're on your own now. So don't turn your back on God. Amen. Don't don't try to shuck and jive. Amen. And have religiosity uh, and make it look good out on the outside. But yet on the inside, we're living a double life. We can't do that. Someone said that a boat doesn't sink because it's in the water. But normally it begins to sink when the water gets in the boat. Boats are made to be on top of the water. Christians are made to be the head, not the tail. Above and not belief, beneath, rather. Amen. Uh, and so we will accomplish the will of God. Uh, amen. If we are lined up with God's will to be filled with God and not to be filled with the world. Amen. The minute we allow the world to begin to encroach our lives, the, me, the minute we begin to let the world fill us, uh, amen, with the things that it's concerned about, uh, we will lose our concern for the kingdom of God and the will of God, uh, and then we begin to sink. We begin to take on things that we're not supposed to take on mindsets and thoughts and and battles in our lives amen begin to happen because we're opening the door amen to uh, uh, the works of satan and the flesh uh, amen and we can never completely fulfill the will of god if we're living a life uh, uh, in that manner can you say amen and so uh amen uh, we have to understand Amen. God's plans are always higher than ours. Higher, greater, everything, right? Amen. I would have never thought that I and my wife would be heading overseas. That doesn't mean that it wasn't that I don't, you know, oh, I, I could never, you know, I'll do whatever God wants me to do. But I know me. You don't know me like I know me. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't know me like my wife knows me. And she's still willing to go. <laughs> but listen, our ways are not like God's. Jeremiah 29, 11, one of my favorite verses of Scripture. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil. Uh, but to give you a future and a hope. God never brings us places to destroy us. Amen. He does work in us. Amen. That our flesh would be a, 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 a sacrifice on the altar of, of self, right? In other words, uh, uh, amen. The Bible says that, you know, in the Old Testament, they did the, the sacrifices, right? Uh, we, we take offerings. Amen. Sometimes you feel like the pastor's killing you because he's taking your money. But in the Old Testament, amen, uh, you actually killed animals. They were the substitute. And yet, amen, the Bible doesn't say that we're supposed to continue in that because we are living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. God should be able to expect things from you and I. And he has thoughts and plans to give us a future. And to hope. Someone asked Billy Graham one time, Billy, why don't you run for president? Let me know who Billy Graham was. The greatest evangelist to ever walk the planet Earth. 
Amen. Not because he was the most talented, not because he was the smartest, but because he stayed doing the will of God. Amen. I know there are other great evangelists. Reinhard Bonnke. Amen. A great, great evangelist. Amen. I listen to him and I get stirred. That's why I want to go overseas. <laughs> That's why I want to do the will of God. Amen. Uh, I remember in the early days, amen, he, uh, he had that German, uh, uh, you know, Ach Bunmenheimen schnitzel to him, right? Uh, amen. Uh, and when he spoke, it's like something uh, went through the microphone into my spirit. Amen. And he would say things like, Africa must be saved. Uh, amen. But he's speaking to to it, uh, amen, not just in theatrics, but it came from the heart, so you know there's a difference, and so they asked Billy Graham, why don't you run for president, you know, because Billy Graham, he had a great relationship with, with many of the presidents, he would pray for them, amen, uh, and uh, uh, things like this, but he said this, why should I step down from doing what God wants me to do? See, he was eternally minded, not politically minded. He wanted the best for who was ever in office and for our nation. He loved this nation. Ponder with me for a few moments. Long before we ever thought about God in terms of surrender, God was already working in us. Many of us can think about whether it's even in our childhood at the earliest days where God was beginning to try to get a hold of us, plant seeds of faith, plant seeds of, 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 of uh, pondering on him and who he is and what he's there for. Amen. Uh, sometimes we're taught uh, uh, wrong, right? I grew up Catholic. Amen. I was taught something different than what the Bible says. I know that there are some similarities and different things. Uh, I remember I was talking with my mom one day. She's Catholic to this day. Amen. She watches our, our uh, online thing. Amen. And loves it. But she's Catholic and that's it. And I remember one time, uh, uh, amen, I'm at home, uh, and uh, I'm a new convert. I had that new convert zeal. Uh, sometimes new convert zeal is, is a little bit overboard, amen. Uh, and, uh, and I was pretty overboard, and we got into it, this big old argument. And later on, I had to apologize to her. But I said, Mom, the Bible says unless the man be born again, you can't enter into the kingdom. It didn't say unless the man is Catholic, then you won't go to heaven. Oh, that, that's your Bible. I said, no, Mom, this is your Bible. I took it off her shelf. And it, you look on it, it says Catholic on it. So the difference between their Bible and ours is just probably seven books. Amen. But the thing is, is that God still was trying to reach into our life. Amen. And so when we begin to look at some things, uh, amen. Uh, uh, I, I remember as a boy, we had, I was living in the projects. When I was just back east, I was preaching in Lowell, the very city I was from. Amen. There's a church there now. It's a powerful time. We, uh, we, uh, every night there was visitors. Uh, people were saved. Uh, people were healed. Uh, it was a, just a tremendous time. Amen. Uh, and, uh, you know, stuff like that begins to stir your faith up again. It's like, oh, maybe it's not so much my fault that things don't always go right, right? You know? <laughs> and so you begin to look at that. Amen. You're seeing people get saved. It was a tremendous time. Uh, but I remember while I was there, I'm going back looking at some of my old stomping grounds. Some of my old stomping grounds don't even exist anymore. My neighborhood, the projects that I lived in, they leveled it. And now they're houses. I couldn't, they didn't even want the memory of my old neighborhood, so they even changed the street names. But I know where it was. I went through it. I said, I remember some of this stuff. Amen. The old park that I used to hang around with, get drunk and smoke and, you know, things like that. No longer a park. It's a school. Lots of different things. I used to fight. I don't know if any of you remember. I used to fight silver mittens. Amen. That was just below. Golden gloves. Amen. And the gym, the West Side gym, no longer exists. The building has been torn down. And now 
a Dunkin' Donuts sits on it. Totally opposite what you think about, right? <laughs> Fitness, no, that's donut holes. <laughs> and so things change over a period of time, though. But God is still at work in our lives. Matthew 4, I want you to turn there with me because this, I want to move through this very quickly, amen, uh, and we're going to pray, but Three things that I want to look at in this scripture, amen, Matthew 4, verses 18 through 20. The Bible says, and Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men, they immediately left their nets and followed him going on. From there he saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, in the boats with Zebedee their father, mending their nets. He called them immediately. They left the boat and their father and followed him. So the first thing that I want to deal with in this is that he finds us. Don't you ever think that you found the Lord? He wasn't lost. We were. Amen. People, I found the Lord. No, you didn't. Amen. <laughs> you know, we act like we lost our keys or something and we found him. It's like, no, are you kidding me? Amen. Uh, hallelujah. But here he was walking by the sea, uh, and this was an intended walk. He wasn't just, oh, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. <laughs> hey, here's a couple of guys. What's up, fellas? What's your name? What's your name? He already knew. This was an intended walk. Uh, amen. He had a purpose in this. Uh, amen. To, to fulfill his desire for these men. Uh, he knew exactly what, when, and how to find who he was looking for. A deliberate walk, ordinary people, fishermen, tax collectors, tent makers, plumbers, electricians, even a few IRS. Maybe some doctors and lawyers mixed in there as well. Amen. Uh, but uh, Jesus never was looking for the high flyers. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. Most of the people in our fellowship, amen, uh, are, are very low flyers. And God is still able to help us, amen, and, and use us for his glory. In fact, that works better for him because the Bible says the foolish things. I was pretty foolish. He uses the foolish things to confound the wise, amen. Uh, and so this is very powerful, this deliberate walk. Uh, even those in this room, amen, he found you, amen. And he allowed you to call out to him. I know it's our choice. We have decisions that we have to make. Amen. Uh, but it is only him. The Bible says that no man comes to the Father. Amen. Unless God draws, the Spirit of God draws him. Amen. Uh, this is not something that we just decide. Uh, amen. But God, uh, usually when you think about your life, there are things that are transpiring, uh, situations. Uh, amen. Uh, and our mind begins to drift. Uh, there's got to be a better answer. There's got to be something that can help me. Uh, and then here comes somebody saying, I've got that answer and it's Jesus. John 15, 5. I am the vine. You are the branches, and he who abides in me, and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. So for those that think it's just, you know, religious calisthenics or, or you, because some people know the Bible more, that they're more uh, intellectually uh, 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 closer to God. That's a bunch of hogwash. Amen. That doesn't give us excuse not to read, uh, amen, the Word of God and to read things about the Word of God. Uh, amen. You need to be careful, though, because there's some stuff out there that looks pretty uh, spiritual, but it's not. Yeah. 
I was talking to my sister-in-law when I was back, amen, my wife and I at one time, we were witnessing to her, telling her about Jesus, uh, amen, uh, and uh, she's like, no, you know, we're just not, you know, into that, you know, and then she begins to talk about her yoga. How many know that yoga is not just exercise? It's involved with Eastern mysticism. Amen. It, it, there is a, a transcendental meditation that is involved. Uh, amen. It's not just an issue of looking at your navel and trying to count to 100. <laughs> and she's involved with this. Uh, uh, and these are doors that are opened up to the demonic realm. Yeah. Amen. And she said to me, well, this is very spiritual. And I says, I agree, but demonic. It's the wrong spirit. You don't want that kind of spirit coming into your home and coming into your mind and coming into your life and coming into your marriage. What we need is Jesus. And knowing this takes all the pride out. I did this. No, you didn't. Amen. The word of God is very apparent for this truth that we can't do it without Jesus. Let's look secondly at he. Not only does he find us, but he calls us. See, this is not like a mother calling for their children to come and eat. Dinner! They're like, ooh, really? <laughs> In the nursery. <laughs> oh, it's time to eat. No, no, I didn't mean that. Amen. It's not like someone who calls someone on the phone to talk with them. Uh, amen. How many know it's much deeper than that? Uh, calling has to do with our occupation. Or even better, what you occupy your life with. More than a casual thing as well. This is something that we invest our time, our efforts, and our resources in. Everything that I am. And everything that I do all centers around God and His will. That's why at any time, amen, when we were called to come to Yakima, my wife and I, amen, uh, I tell this story and I'll try to be as brief as possible, amen, but we're, uh, we're in uh, Ogden, our mother church, my wife and I, we're pastoring down in a little city called Clearfield, God was helping us, we were getting some breakthrough, uh, people were making good decisions, uh, uh, it, was, it was a tremendous time. Amen. And so pastor or evangelist Chris Hart, uh, amen, he's coming to Ogden. Amen. So we're there Monday night for the revival. And all of a sudden, Pastor uh, Hart calls me out and gives me a word. Well, parts, God's going to do something powerful in your ministry. Things are going to begin to shift. They're going to change. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. Uh, and we're all like, yeah, you know, we're doing the, you know, we're doing the jig. We're going, uh, you know, everybody in the place, there's three, four hundred people in the building. And, and we're rejoicing. And we had no idea what was ahead of us. <laughs> Amen. Then Tuesday night comes once again. Amen. It was powerful. Uh, then Wednesday, I'm getting ready for, uh, for church. I'm home from work. I get cleaned up, getting ready, and the phone rings. Ring. <laughs> I answer the phone. It's my pastor. See, I always know when my pastor's serious about some things. When everything's good, he calls me Bartholomew. Uh -oh. Bartholomew, how you doing, bro? How you doing? I'm good, Pastor. I'm good. But when he's here, he says, Bart. Yes, sir. So he answers, I answer the phone. Hello? Bart. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you. What I do wrong. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He begins to talk. He's all, you know, this, that, and the other. And, and he's talking about this, this church. And, and, uh, uh, you know, and I'm thinking, I'm, you know, sometimes I'm a little hard up here to think. I said, why is he telling me all of this? He says, I want to know if you'll go. <laughs> Say again. I want to know if you'll go and take over that church. Amen. And I'm like, okay. Can I pray about this? By all means, but I need to know as soon as possible. So 
A long story short, the next day, we're, at, we're in Ogden for the final night of the revival. Amen. And he says to me, uh, oh, actually, I, I got there late. Amen. He's praying. And, and throughout the whole night, amen, I, I don't have a word from God yet. I don't say yes. I, I haven't heard a no. Uh, amen. My wife's like, I don't want to go. Had nothing to do with Yakima. We've never been there. But we don't want to disrupt what God's doing there. We're, we want to do the will of God, but is this the will of God? And so we're pondering this and we're thinking about this, amen, and, and I'm, I'm sweating great drops of blood almost, it seemed, amen. Uh, they weren't literally coming out, but it felt like that. I was in agony. Amen, and then that night comes, and I know, you know, pastor's looking right at me, and I don't have a word from him. So at the end, he goes off with the, the evangelist, and I'm like, at least one more day. <laughs> Next thing I know, I feel this hand on my shoulder. Bart. <laughs> yes, sir. You have an answer for me? And I said, well, yes and no, pastor. I says, I'm concerned about some things. Okay, what are they? I mean, right to business, you know. It's like, and I says, well, God's doing a great thing there, and I don't want to disrupt it. He says, I know, Bart. I've had to leave. I had to have left many a churches. If God's involved with this, God will work through things, you know. And this is some of the things that I've learned over the years. Listen to your pastor sometime. Listen to leaders. Listen to people that have gone through it. Amen. And I'm, you know, and, I, and, and uh, you know, I, I had a couple of excuses that I kept bringing up. And he had an answer for everyone. Boom, boom, boom. But the real issue was coming up. Who's going to take my church? Because if I leave, I want to have know somebody's going to take care of these people. Because I've fought for them. I've prayed for them. I've sweated for them. I've cried with them. I've laid hands on them, sometimes feet. And I was very concerned for their well-being, their life. And I said, well, who's going to take over the church? In my mind, I didn't tell him this, but in my mind, if he said this one, this one, or this one, I'm going to say no. He says, I only have one person I can put in there. And the person that he was thinking about, I wasn't even thinking about. And he says, well, the only one I have is Darnell. I'm like, oh. He's the only one that I have to let go in. Because he's a good brother. He's a good pastor. He's a good friend. And I know he'll do well. I said, pastor, I have nothing else to say. I'll go. He's like, oh, praise the Lord, shook my hand. And he's like, he's gone. <laughs> and I'm standing there all by myself, looking at the ground. And I said, what did I just do? I did the will of God. He called me. And he brought us here. And he's been doing a great work. It's not always the best at what we want. But God is in that place. And we have built relationships and God has moved. Uh, Matthew 4 verse 19. Follow me and I will make you fishers uh, of men. He is forging something into them. Uh, amen. Even from day one. Uh, we don't always understand things at first. Uh, I know I didn't. The disciples didn't. Uh, there has to be a beginning place uh, where we're going to say, okay, uh, I'm going to do uh, the will of God. And then after he finds us and he calls us I want to close with he equips us I could never do this no you can't again Matthew 419 I will make you amen we're not born for this we're made for this he brings us to that place I will put into you what you need to accomplish this task. You don't have it in your own accord. He's the one that enables us. He strengthens us. He qualifies us. Failure is not an option. 
not in God's book. Amen. In our illustration earlier, the boat, uh, amen, that's in the water that is supposed to be floating, amen, uh, but it only begins to sink when the water, amen, begins to get into the boat, uh, amen, and that could be because of a leak, amen. How many know we are leaky vessels? We forget things. We let things slip. Amen. Our attitudes sometimes, if we're honest, come on, somebody. Amen. We got some bad attitudes. We look at our kids like, you got a bad attitude. No, we got to look at ourselves sometimes in the Christian type of things and say, hey, I got a bad attitude. I need to repent. Thank God for preaching. Sometimes it could be because the ship is broken. Amen. Uh, people come into our church all the time broken. And sometimes the, the storms of life are raging and, and things are moving and shifting. Amen. And all of these different things. Amen. But when the water begins to get in us, it causes us to shipwreck. Did you know that most large ships have sump pumps to them? I don't know what a sump pump is. A sump pump is a pump that is put in a particular place, uh, amen, so that if there is water in like a basement or something like that, it will pump the water out, right? That water is not supposed to be in there, so we need something to get it out. And these large ships are built this way, uh, amen, because the water coming in should not stay in. Constant draining of the excess water. So it'll stay afloat. There's some things you and I need to drain out of our minds, out of our hearts, out of our lives. This is what church does for us. It keeps us afloat. Not because I have to, right? I, I remember Pastor Cluck one time, somebody came up to him, Pastor, now that I'm saved, do I have to come to church? And, and he said, come here, come here. You need to get back down here. You didn't get the goods. You didn't get saved. You got religion. I mean, no, we need to have a real relationship with God that says, I don't have to do anything, but I want to. You don't have to go to heaven. Amen. You can go to hell if you want. I don't want to, and I don't want you to. I don't think you want to. Anybody here want to go to hell? No. So we do the will of God. First John 3. Verse 24, as I close, whoever keeps his commandments abides in God and God in him. And by this, we know that he abides in us by the spirit to whom he has given us. When the spirit of God is at work in our lives, listen to me, there'll be evidence, not just speaking in tongues. We understand that, but there will be other evidences. Amen. Not just the love, the joy, and oh, the praise the Lord stuff. You know, all of that is good. Can you say amen? But what's best is obedience unto God. As I close, we are faced with a choice this morning. Sometimes we're faced multiple choices. The word or the world. Amen. You can't have both. Amen. I cannot have the world and still go to Guyana. Because I'm leaving everything behind. My wife is leaving her kids and her grandkids. It's not forever. It's not the end of the world. But it is a sacrifice. Right now, everything we own is in my van. We have nothing else. We've gotten rid of everything. Actually, it's not true. Totally. My, we still have our house, but uh, the only reason we still have that is because Pastor Mark moved into it. Otherwise, we were going to sell it too. And we'd have done it that way. Because it's not always evil versus good. What it is, is good versus best. What's the best thing God has for us? Because we can go to church all the time, and that's good. But we need church in us. That's better. To live for God, for whatever he has for us, that is what we were made for.
Let's give God praise tonight. God, we thank you and magnify you. Oh, halalamanda rebe kitalalabando reboshe. Wonderful is your name. I want every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm not going to take much more of your time, but